If you are a writer, you're making a great story. While you're creating that story, you forget some key rules that you've already previously set. Your fandom that you have created through your incredible story has now looked into it and found out all of the dirty secrets and the retcons that you have created. Dragon Ball has created a lot of retcons, which then became plot holes. Things that non-Dragon Ball fans used against us to tell us why Dragon Ball shouldn't be as loved as it is. Well, I love Dragon Ball, but I'm here to tell you they're awesome. Models. For starters, the Patara Earring Fusion Limit. Introduced in Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta was created using the Patara Earrings, which was told by Elder Kai that once used, the two beings can never be split apart. And then what happens when Vegeta does eventually split apart, we kind of dubbed it down to magical bullshit that occurred within Majin Buu's body. Then we cut to Dragon Ball Super, where we hear Gowasu letting us know that these Patara Earrings are only permanent if you are Kaioshin. Wait a sec, I think we're all kind of misunderstanding something or something. In the manga, Trunks became an apprentice to the Supreme Kai. If he is an apprentice, does that mean now if he became the Supreme Kai and accepted the responsibility and the duties, does that mean if he did fusion while in the Supreme Kai role, he would be permanently fused with another Kaioshin? What dubs a Kaioshin? Most people ran with it and said, oh, that's not a retcon. Yeah, I look to you and I say this. It made more sense when they said everybody used the earrings are permanently fused forever. Like what Elder Kai said, when he fused with that witch, giving him the old appearance that we've seen, did we ever question why? No, because we were already told that the Patara Earring Fusion is permanent. If a mortal is the only character that can have the one hour limit, then what about a mortal that has God Key? Hmm? See, by introducing this one hour limit, it brings up more questions than bringing up answers. Now for a little smaller one, we jump all the way back to Dragon Ball Z, the Namek Saga, where we all remember Goku touching down the planet, giving our heroes hope by defeating Raccoon, Birder, and Chase. While there, instead of Krillin telling Goku everything, Goku puts his hand on Krillin, says, nah, I'm about to read your mind. I'm about to find out all that I missed. He learned everything that he missed by touching his head and reading his mind. Has that ability ever come back to play? No. Will it? Probably not. Is it really that big of a deal? Not really. This next one is Perfect Cell. In the Cell Saga, everyone remembers this. After getting his top part of the body destroyed by Goku doing the war coming coming. We already knew that Cell was just gonna bring himself back. Then we hear a lot of episodes later after his body exploded that as long as his nucleus survives, which is located in his head, he will be fine. The same head that was destroyed by Goku mere episodes before. To cope with this, the fandom has just agreed that in order to destroy Cell, you need to destroy everything about it. We really try not to take the nucleus statement all too seriously just because that saga gave us the best transformation of Dragon Ball history. But a plot hole that we were very shocked became canon in 2018 when Dragon Ball Super Broly released to the world was Bardock Minus. When we first see Bardock in Dragon Ball Super Broly, not being the same Bardock that we knew from the great Bardock special, not looking like a badass, the edgy father protagonist, we saw this new Bardock and we all said, Oh hell no. Goku is Superman. This just confirms it. Fuck the renegade the saying that we all really love. Nah, we got this. We want our Bardock back. This is a retcon. This is a plot hole. How was Bardock even up there in space blasting and trying to stop Freeze's ball? Was it just there to give us fans a sign of peace? Well, I'm here to tell you first and only. Yes. Yes, that was. Is it a retcon? No. The Bardock special was not created by Akira Toriyama. Dragon Ball Super Broly was created with Akira Toriyama. Why did I mention it if it's not a plot hole? Because it was to my understanding that most people online saw it as a retcon. So if you're watching my video for the first time, now you know it's not really a retcon. Unlike this next plot hole, I cut you all the way to Dragon Ball Super, where we see Goku versus Hits. Goku, knowing that he has to resort to a technique that he thinks, if done incorrectly, could kill him, pulls out the blue Kaioken, a technique that scared the sh out of Beerus. Beerus remarking, was this saying about to use it against me in a rematch? He's also interrupting and saying, do I sense fear from you? Beerus, of course, chalking up and saying, no, of course not. Some people can look at it as a gag. And some of us thought, oh shit, man, I can't wait for the Beerus rematch. What happened? Why is now Beerus not even considering Goku a challenge anymore? Because you look at the manga, Beerus utters that when you reach my strength, then I can nominate you as a god of destruction. Goku, of course, uttering that he would never want to become a god of destruction, but 
that's also letting us know that at this point in the story, you know, this is Goku after going Master Ultra Instinct. And Beerus is still not even considering him close to his own full strength. Because the massive plot hole is, Beerus' strength will always go up as long as Goku's strength goes up. Because we can never have Beerus and Goku be near the same level for some unexplained reason. During the Renaissance of Dragon Ball, aka Dragon Ball Z, we already had a massive nuke dropped on us. When Supreme Kai told Gohan that I have the ability to unlock your full potential. We already thought Gohan is already the strongest he can be. He passed the barrier that no other character at the time could ever do. Yet, here in Z, we have Elder Kai loading a lot of convenient words to us, saying that Gohan, with my abilities and your potential that has yet to be unlocked, I will take you to the next level of your power. All you gotta do is sit down and let me perform a dance around you. That outright frustrated me. How are you gonna tell me that my favorite character of the series, minus future Gohan, has more power that he can unlock? Don't keep chalking up to this potential bullshit. And of course, you know, when we thought that they couldn't chalk up the potential bullshit to one level, they went even further beyond and gave us Beast Gohan. But the Gohan slander aside, I can't forget about the other brother, Goten, and his friend Trunks. The aging of Goten and Trunks. At the end of Dragon Ball Z, they were the canonical hype. But coming to Dragon Ball Super, where we confirm that there is a time skip from Z to Super. Yet, Goten and Trunks, may I even say smaller than they were in Z. Superhero may have tried to clarify it by saying, oh, us uh, Saiyans, we get growth spurts randomly. No! Just admit to yourself that the writers forgot. As long as you own it, we can understand. You try to super under the rug, oh, we better call you out. Like, we're gonna call out someone in the animation department of Toei decided to give Mojito a little evil devious smirk. And if you don't know who the character is, he is the angel for Universe 9. The first universe to be eliminated in the Terminator Power. With his evil smirk, we expected a story to come out of it. We expected a reason why he gave us a smirk. Could it be the fact that he didn't like his universe? Could it also be the fact that maybe he's a rogue angel? Guess what? We'll never know, because that plotline has been abandoned in the manga, and as far as we're concerned, with no anime in sight, the anime as well. And as long as the anime has been going, I want to look a little bit closer at the specials. Specifically, the Future Trunks history special that depicts us what happened to Future Gohan. How did Trunks unlock his Super Saiyan form? We watched this terrific special, but then it posed to us one major question. Why isn't Goku helping? Does it really seem like Goku to want to be a character to look at his son fighting for his life. Yep, Trunks never heard Goku's voice. King Kai must have obviously not give two fuck about wanting to help Goku communicate with people on Earth. Goku must have just died and said, you know what? They'll be fine. They don't need my help. The Goku that we all know, of course, would go to King Kai, come up with a plan, communicate with a plan, maybe try to even bring himself back via the Namekian Dragon Balls. And that right there, in my opinion, is the biggest plot hole of Dragon Ball for me. Thank you very much for watching. You guys stay safe and peace.